All right. So when we left off, um, before I had to run to class and interrupt this video, um, this is what we had. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to take all of these and write equations off of them. So these two right here, um, I'm going to particularly rewrite those. And we're going to end up with a system that only has four equations in it. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to take equation one, and I'm going to rewrite it such that this variable right here, y3, which is equal to dy2 dt, uh, is all by itself. Okay, and that's actually not too hard. So negative m1 y2 dot is equal to uh, k1 y1 plus c1 y2 minus k2 y1 minus y4 minus x02 minus c2 y2 minus y5. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same over here for equation 2. And all we would need to do is divide everything by negative m1. So, so this becomes a negative m1. This becomes minus m1. This becomes a plus, and then this becomes k2 over m1. This becomes a plus, and this comes, becomes divided by m1. So, no, no, no. Awesome. And then we've got y. So if we move this to this side, uh, m negative words, m2 y6, or if we rewrite y6 as y5 dot is equal to k2 y1 minus y4 minus x02 plus c2 y2 minus y5 minus f of t. And then we go ahead and divide by negative m2 and we are just left with y5 dot. This becomes a negative. This becomes a negative. And this becomes a positive. Okay, so now we have these equations, and we can go ahead and plug these in here and here, where I drew the arrow. And now what we have is we have four different equations that are in terms of y1, y2, y3, and y4. No, y1, y2, y4, and y5. We've effectively cut out y3 and y6 here. So we only have now four variables. These four. Okay. Um, so just going back and I'm going to leave this up here, but I'm going to rewrite my system of equations now. I have y1 dot is equal to, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to y1 y2, y4, and y5, okay? And so this is equal to uh, y2. Okay, and then I got my y2 dot, which is equal to, and I can break this down now into y1s and y2s. So if I play around with this, um, I got y2 dot is equal to, here's a y1, here's a y1, and I believe the rest are y4 and y5. So this is equal to lumping this in, negative k1 over m1 plus k2 over m1 y1. It's all my y1 terms, okay? And then now I'll take my y2 terms. I've got plus negative c1 over m1 
and then Y2 shows up here, plus C2 over M1, Y2, and these are all my Y2 terms now. And then I got my Y4 here, and I got my Y5 here, and then I got this other variable that does... Sorry, just watching myself do fun jazz hand dances. I should be a hand dancer. Um, yep, that's not weird at all. So I got my, next I've got my Y4 term, so this is negative K2 over M1 times Y4, and then I got my Y5 term, which is plus negative C2 over M1, Y5, and then I got my XO2 term, which is just kind of the constant. Look, I'm hand dense again. Um, K2 over M1. So this becomes a plus negative K2 over M1 times XO2. And that's all constant, okay? So I've arranged all of these over here on this side. Constant slash forcing function. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out now. So I, for my Y1 term, I've got negative K1 over M1 plus K2 over M1 Y1. And then I got my Y2 term plus negative C1 over M1 plus C2 over M1 Y2. Then I got my Y4 term, which is plus negative K2 over M1 Y4. I got my Y5 term, which is plus negative C2 over M1 Y5. And then I got my constants and forcing functions, which is plus negative K2 over M1 times X01 which is the uh, original, oop, that's an XO2, original extension length of that spring, okay? And then I can go with Y dot four, which is the next one in the sequence, is equal to Y5. And then I can take my next one, which is Y dot five, and write out the other equation. So my Y dot five, is equal to my y1 terms, which is, this is the only place it shows up. y2 shows up, y4, y5, okay. So we got all of them. So this is equal to negative k2 over m2, y1, plus negative c2 over m2, y2, plus K2 over M2, Y4 plus C2 over M2, Y5 plus, and then I got my forcing function and I got my constant. So my constant up here is that, oops, sorry, this. So it's equal to K2 over M2 times XO2 plus F of T divided by M2. And now I can take all of this and plug it in over here. So I'll do that. Don't know why I didn't just write it up here because apparently today is a day for inefficiencies. So we have negative K2 over M2 Y1 plus negative C2 over M2 Y2 plus K2 over M2 Y4 plus C2 over M2, Y5, plus 
K2 over M2 times XO2 plus F of T divided by M2. Okay. Now, the reason why I wrote this this way um, is that I have very specific reasons for doing this. With these equations written like this, we can say that we have zero y1 plus one y2 plus zero y4 plus zero y5 plus zero. I can fill in zeros all day long. Zero, zero, one, zero, okay? And I can do this. This is perfectly rational. It's perfectly logical. And in fact, I can then take all of these values that I've exploded out all over the board, blah, and I can take these values and I can plug them into what's known as a matrix. Um, so you may or may not have ever dealt with a matrix before. Uh, chances are you have not. So guess what? We're gonna be talking about what is a matrix now. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is to introduce the concept of a matrix. A matrix is just a bunch of numbers. And each number corresponds to something significant. Each number is important relative to the rest of the matrix. Like for example, this one right in front of a Y2 it matters because that's how we define the problem. If I were to change this to a two, it would fundamentally alter the entire rest of the problem because that's how I defined it. If y1 dot is equal to y2, then y1, then if I now changed it to where y1 dot is equal to two y2, then y2 is equal to one half x1 dot. I would change the definition of y2, and it would change every time I use y2, and it would also change the definition of y3. So this one value, putting a one right here, changes the entire rest of the matrix. Similarly, if I have a two value here, the rest of the matrix is defined knowing what that two means. So. A matrix is having a group of numbers where each of these numbers means something, okay? It's like, uh, you know, let's say um, I have five football players, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna develop a matrix uh, based on my five football players, okay? Uh, you know what? Um, I pick on Sam Vanderslice often in this class. I'm picking on Sam Vanderslice again. Uh, Sam cloned himself five times, and he's trying to create the ultimate football player. All right, and so this is Sam one, uh, Sam two, Sam three, Sam four, I just ran out of space, and Sam five, okay? So Sam cloned himself five times. These are his different people. Now, he then recorded their uh, 40 speeds, how fast it takes to run a 40 yard dash. Okay, uh, and this Sam got a four, 440, absolutely nuts. Uh, this Sam got a 480, this Sam got a 560, uh, this Sam got a 520, uh, and this Sam got, uh, uh, he, he got a 5 -0. Okay, um, then, then Sam decided to say, okay, well, I want to see how much uh, max hit impulse is uh, based on momentum. And Sam 1 had a momentum of, uh, momentum change after hitting this block of, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to make up a number here. Well, yeah, we're just going to throw in numbers. 200. Okay, this is 300. This is 350. This is 300. And this is 280. Okay. Um, and maybe that's, that's pound meters per, I don't care. I don't know what the units are on that. I'm just making up data at this point, uh, which 
invalidates my scientific integrity, but oh well, my butt is facing you. Um, na, 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 na. So uh, let's say he also measured thing like like weight um, and and height and uh, you know looked at all these different values and compared each of these to each other. If Sam was to change this one value, well, it would change the definition of what this column means. And that may have implications on the rest of the matrix. Because the rest of the matrix, if I change this one value, and I say, well, I think it should have been a five, not a 4.4, um, then you have to adjust the rest of the values here and any other calculated variable that depends on that column. So what you end up having is, or, or here say if, if Sam instead replaces Sam1 with, you know, uh, Richard, um, which I guess Richard isn't in this class, so uh, who else do I pick on in this course? Uh, you know what, it's Sean Murray. Sean, Sean gets brought in. That's not just going to change this one value, it's going to change all of the values in this row. And it may impact other rows depending on whether or not accommodations have to be made for measuring Sean differently from Sam1, Sam's first clone. So looking at all of these different variables, this is a matrix. And we can take this matrix of values and we can do math with it. We can have all of this correspond to, we can come up with an algorithm to come up with a goodness ratio, uh, where each of these is multiplied by some function or, or put into some function where, where a value is pulled out of it. And, you know, maybe, maybe you want a max impulse to be maximized, but you want your uh, 40 speed to be minimized. And how do you put that into a function uh, to make that make sense? And maybe you have to rearrange your data. Maybe you have to calculate each row independently. And maybe you get a whole new matrix full of data. All of the values depend on each other because all of the values are interrelated. They each mean something. And the item next to it, the way that the item next to it is defined affects how it itself is defined. Okay, so this is ultimately what a matrix is. It isn't just a random array of numbers where you can change a number and that doesn't affect anything. Um, it's a random array of numbers where each of the numbers depend on the other numbers in the matrix to mean something. And that's significant because what it means at the end of the day is when you have a matrix, there are a number of operations that we can do. A matrix is typically represented by a capital letter, such as A, okay? And I can say A is equal to one, two, three, four, okay? And I can apply certain factors to it. Let's say we'll make, uh, we'll make B is equal to five, seven, nine, 11, okay? A plus B is equal to C. Let's say maybe that that's true. If A plus B is equal to C, then we add individual members of that matrix, okay? This would be much like if, if this is the 440 speed and this is also 440 speed, then it's asking, well, how fast would it take to run two 40s? Well, it's this plus this. Well, Sam one, if he runs it twice, you add those together, you get six. That's what it means. And, three and nine, it gets 12. You can't add Sam's 40 speed to his impulse. Those are two different units, two different, completely different entities. But you can add Sam 1's impulse to Sam 2, Sam 1's impulse, because those, have, those values have the same meaning. So here this becomes nine and this becomes 15. Okay, so add these together, this is what you get. 1 plus 5 is 6, 3 plus 9 is 12, 2 plus 7 is 9, 4 plus 11 is 15. That's basic fundamental matrix math, okay? Um, similarly, we can subtract this. This could have been a minus b, and then it would be 1 minus 5. That would be negative 4. 3 minus 9, this would be negative 6. 2 minus 7, this would be a negative 5. 4 minus 11, that would be a negative 7, okay? We can go ahead and do all of that if we want. That's perfectly fine. And that's all valid, but we have to make sure that these matrices have the same size. 
if I were to, you know, so let's say this matrix is, uh, our first column is gonna be uh, cost of a cherry. Because we're, we're really looking at maybe putting together a matrix for, uh, we're putting together a fruit salad. Uh, cost of a banana. Uh, cost of a grape. And, and we got this, and uh, this is supermarket one, supermarket two, supermarket three, okay? We have each of these filled out. And let's say we come back and we have five different samples that we take from around the year, just to get a good average from each store, okay? And we'll call, we'll call matrix A will be this one uh, that we took in January. And then matrix B is this one that we took in February. And C we took in March, D we took in April, E we took in May, F we took in June, G we took in July, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And let's see if I can count to 12. Okay? So we want to know what this value is. And the average of this is, we'll call this equal to matrix M, and then if we divide matrix M by 12, we get the average cost of each one of these items in each supermarket per the year, okay? This is great. What if, you know, one month for matrix C, well, what we have is we have supermarket one, two, and three, and we get cherries, and we get banana, and we get grape, and I don't know who was measuring it this year, but they were like, hey, we should also get grapefruit and coconuts and and uh, fruit flies and you know what, what it costs to get pig's ears and, and all those other delicacies. And the problem is with this matrix, we now have a coconut section and coconuts only show up in C. And if we start adding all these together, we're gonna have What's left is a weird number that means that it just ends up being this coconut section divided by 12. And it doesn't make any sense. So there are some rules that come along with matrices. You can only add matrices if their dimensions are the same. Here, the dimension of C, this has four columns. Whereas the rest of them only have three. So adding that fourth column only in one it doesn't produce anything useful. You would have to go back and add a fourth column in every single other matrix in order to make that column have any meaning. So, rule number one for addition is that they have to have the same dimension, okay? Similarly, if we only took data for supermarkets one and two for E, we didn't take any data for supermarket three. It means that the end result that we get plugging it into M, M is not going, is gonna reflect that it's missing values for E. What do we, do we plug in zeros there? That then we're gonna get a wrong answer. So it has to have the same dimensions. It has to have the same number of columns and the same number of rows for every time you add these. Otherwise the end result you get doesn't make sense anymore. There's something wrong. The values are no longer linked together. Okay, so there are rules that come with matrix addition. Um, there are also rules that come with matrix multiplication. Um, for now, with this understanding of what a matrix is, uh, oh dang, I guess I gotta teach one more thing. So let's say we're gonna take this matrix right here, supermarket one, two, and three, and we wanna know what it would cost between the three different supermarkets to buy uh, three cherries, five bananas, and uh, I don't know, 12 grapes, okay? And this is, this is what we wanna know. We're gonna be buying this from uh, a number of different stores. We're gonna buy it from three different stores. And we just wanna be able to compare it using the matrix that we have set up, okay? Now, 
in order to compare this, what we end up having to do is we end up doing something called matrix math. So if this is A, and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to define this as little vector V. A V, A multiplied by V uh, is going to give us uh, a new matrix and we're going to call it C. Okay? So we're just going to multiply this by this. And how do we do that? Well, in order to do matrix multiplication, uh, what you end up doing is you multiply row by row. Okay, so here it makes sense that we have three cherries, five bananas, and 12 grapes. Well, three, five, and 12. It's written like this because the standard protocol for matrix multiplication is the following. Okay, I'm going to take this row and I'm going to multiply it by the first column over here. Now this only has one column. That does impact things. So first row, first column, multiply them. The end result is going to be a matrix where it is in the first row and the first column is the result. So at 1 times 10, 2 times 13, and 3 times 16. That's 10 plus 26 plus 48, which I am not doing that in my head. So I'm going to call that 30 because I didn't want to do that in my head. Okay. You know what? I should just calculate the right value. What is 10 plus 26? 10 plus 26 plus 48. Okay. So this is equal to 84. And that's that value. That's what happens when we multiply this matrix by this matrix. We get 84 in the top left corner. But now we have to multiply this row by this column to get this value. And this row by this column to get this value. Okay? So now 11 plus 28 plus 51. Well, that's equal to 90. Okay, and then we have to multiply this row by that column. So this becomes 12 plus 30 plus 3 times 18 is 54. 96. And that's my top row of my resultant matrix. And now we have to multiply this row by this column, this column, this column, and then this row by this column, this column, this column. This is how you do matrix math. That's the rules that have been set up. Um, it's always first one multiplied by the first row multiplied by the column of the next one. Okay. So if we're going back to this example here, when we multiply A times V, we should get C. Now these two matrices have the same dimension. This is a three by three matrix. It's a three by three matrix. The results in a three by three matrix. All right, everything's good. What happens if we try to multiply a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1? Or a 1 by 3, I should say. This is actually a... You're supposed to do rows before columns. So it's a 3 by 3, 3 by 3, 3 by 1. So here we have a 3 by 3 matrix, and we're multiplying by a 3 by 1 matrix. Okay? Is that possible? Well, yes, because we have number of cherries, number of bananas, number of grapes. And we're going to end up with that cost for three different supermarkets. This number here signifies that the number of items in a row, or the number of columns in the first matrix, has to be multiplied by the number of rows in the second matrix. That has to be true. Okay? If these two are the same number, then it can be multiplied. And the resulting vector is this number and this number, 3 by 1. So the resulting vector that we can expect is a 3 by 1 vector. It's going to look like this. Okay. So when I multiply this, I'm going to end up with supermarket 1 for my first row, supermarket 2 for my second row, supermarket 3 for my third row, which is what we want. Because we're multiplying this, the quantities that we're doing, multiplied by the cost per quantity, we should get a total cost. The resulting vector that we get 
our C vector should be a total cost. So as an example, let's say this is 10 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents. Uh, this is 12 cents. This is 9 cents. And this is 9 cents. And this is uh, 11 cents, 11 cents, and 5 cents. Okay? So Supermarket 3 sells grapes pretty cheap. First of all, we're looking at a three by three matrix. We're multiplying it by a three by one, okay? Three by three multiplied by three by one. Because they have, because this one has the same number of columns as this one has rows, we can multiply them, okay? The resulting vector C is going to be equal to 0 0.1 times three plus 0 0.1 times five plus 0.1 times 12, okay? So that equals 0 0.8 plus 1.2. This is gonna end up equaling 2.0 or $2, okay? Then we take 0 0.12 times three, so that's 36, plus 0 0.09 times five, which is 0.45, plus 0 0.09 times 12. And I'm gonna have to do that on a calculator because I can't do that in my head. And this is gonna be equal to 1.89. And then we can do the same for the bottom row, okay? 0.11 times three plus 0.11 times five plus 0.05 times 12, and this equals 1.48, okay? So of these three, which supermarket sells at the cheapest? Well, it's gonna be supermarket three, okay? And we can use matrix math to figure that out. Matrices are incredibly powerful. What we're going to do for our purposes is we're gonna take that concept of matrix math and we're gonna plug it back in over here, okay? So short segue on matrix math. Uh, we're gonna cover more matrix math in the coming lectures, because that's where everything is headed. Um, so as soon as we start talking about systems and how to develop systems, we get into matrices and then how to solve the matrices. Uh, there are interlinked concepts. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, now that I know I have everything written in this format, I'm gonna plug this into a matrix. Okay, and my matrix is going to be, I'm gonna go ahead and call my D matrix is gonna be equal to Y1 dot, Y2 dot, Y4 dot, and Y5 dot, okay? The four vectors here. How many rows does it have? Four. How many columns does it have? One. This is a four by one matrix, or a vector. You wanna call it a vector. Okay, anytime you have a one column matrix, you can also call it a vector. It's just terminology. I'm gonna go ahead and call A, I'm gonna say A is my matrix defining all of my terms. And A is going to be zero, one, zero, zero, zero. This term, dang it, I don't wanna write it out again. I will. Negative K1 over M1 plus K2 over M1. Negative C2, negative C1 over M1. Well, I guess I can combine these a little bit to make them prettier. So this is K2 minus K1 over M1. I'm not gonna put it in parentheses anymore. This is C2 minus C1 over M1. This is negative K2 over M1. This is negative C2 over M1. And this over here is negative K2 over M1 times XO2. Okay, and then we got our zeros again. Zero, one, zero. And then we got this value, which is 
negative k2 over m2. Negative c2 over m2. k2 over m2, c2 over m2, and then our last one, k2 xo2 over m2 plus, oop, plus f of t. Okay, and now how many terms do we have? Well, A has four rows, one, two, three, four, which makes sense because we have four equations. And it has one, two, three, four, five columns. So A is equal to a four by five matrix. Sweet. Now we have one more piece to add on to this, okay? And the last piece is what I'm gonna call our Y matrix. Y matrix is equal to Y1, Y2, Y4, Y5. Because remember, we put everything in terms of Y1, Y2, Y4, Y5. Now, this, our Y vector, is gonna be a four by one matrix. If we multiply A times Y, uh, we end up with four times five. Oh shoot, right. I have to add one more va variable in here. One, because this last column represents something that gets multiplied by a constant, a one value. So Y is equal to a five by one. If we multiply A by Y, we have a four by five multiplied by a five by one. The resulting vector will be a four by one. Now that's true because that's what we define D to be. And that's what we want. So our end result of multiplying A times Y is equal to D. We can rewrite our equation, that entire thing, as D is equal to a Y. And boy, what a day we're having. Okay. And this is a valid equation. That's the solution. If we can solve this problem, we can figure out what x1 and x2 are. Because all we have to do is solve for what is y1 and what is y4. And our matrix gives us the ability to solve in terms of each other because all of those values are interrelated. So that's interesting. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here at D equals AY because we don't have the, the tools that we need in order to really solve this problem yet. Um, there's still a few more steps that we have to do and in order to really understand this equation, this giant matrix that we just set up and how we can do math on it, we're really gonna need to do some studying on matrix, matrices. I gave you a little bit of info on matrices uh, already in this class. We're gonna focus on matrices uh, next week, uh, matrix operations. You do have a reading assignment due this week that has matrices in it. Uh, we are gonna be reading about matrices and how to do matrix operations for the sole purpose of trying to solve this system. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Um, I'm gonna give you another lecture on Thursday, which is tomorrow, uh, and it is going to be over fundamentals of matrix, which I covered a little bit of that. I am gonna go back and cover matrix again. And eventually, when we get done covering matrices, I am gonna come back and we're gonna discuss this problem and how to solve it. All we've done is set up a system of equations. All this is, D, is, it's, it's a derivative vector. Of x1 dot, x2 dot, x, x1 double dot, x2 double dot, that's all that this is. We still haven't solved this. All we've done is put it together in mathematical form so that we can solve it. Uh, and the mathematical, the reason why we've done all of this math, why we put all this math together, uh, is because solving this problem is actually remarkably simple. We do have to bring together concepts that we talked about with Laplace, and we do have to bring together concepts that we talked about 
we, well, we're going to talk about with matrix math, but once we do that, we have the solution to this problem, and we're good. So I'll see, I'll see you tomorrow for a last lecture. I'm going to try to do it at 2.30 tomorrow after class. Uh, we'll see if that works out again. And uh, have a good Wednesday. Um, enjoy uh, what was going to be midterm week right before finals but is no longer midterm week right before finals.